Okay guys, so we're trying to do a video on making uh, ropes from scratch for uh, uh, turtle traps and uh, hoop nets. Now, I've done a tutorial on this before on Chapter Man. I did, uh, you know, pictures and everything. But, I don't know, uh, net making, especially with the hoop nets, is becoming a dying art. And not a lot of people know how to do it, and a lot of people who do who do know, it's either um, nobody knows, and they you know people just don't want to take the time to learn, or they don't want to talk about it. And it's a dying art, and I figured somebody should share it. And um, a little bit about me is um, I've been making nets, everything from purse nets to hoop nets, uh, Dogaza nets, falconry nets. I've just been making all kinds of nets since I was about 13 or 19 now. Um, Central Hall for most of the world. I've never had anybody to sit down and um, show me how to you know, make nets. Most of the stuff I learned was off of YouTube and the internet. Um, I did have some uh, very helpful people off of Trapper Man who uh, helped me with that. And, uh, you guys know who you are. I'm very, very thankful for y'all. And um, I figured I might as well uh, do this video. So, this, this knowledge can be uh, passed on and everything. And also, it's just really good to know how to make your own uh, turtle and catfish hoops and stuff like that. So, um, today we're actually doing what's called a wire net. Um, a wire net is composed of a frame made of um, some type of you know wire fencing material. Um, I, I make sliders. I, I make my slider turtle traps out of a 2x4. 2x4, I think it's like 14 gauge uh, field fencing. Um, but for snap control and stuff, that's a bit too light. Um, other people I've talked to, they make them out of this is, I'm not sure what gauge it is, it's a little lighter than other stuff I use, but this is concrete remesh. And it's a 4x4, four, four, 4 inch by 4 inch square. And it's a lot heavier, so you can actually use these for turtles. Uh, I would be doing like actual production turtle trapping. I would get some of the two by four horse panel and I would weld, actually weld my cage out and weld it really well. And that's not going to break. But for the light stuff I do, mainly sliders and uh, small snap turtles, um, the, the wire nets work really good. So as I was saying, the wire net, the body's composed of wire, the frame's composed of wire for say. An actual throat that the turtles go into is made of actual twine. So we would actually uh, net or knit the whole uh, throat and the back to it, the back door to it um, on this. And also if this is too big, like some of, some of what I've been finding out, the sliders, a lot of smaller ones can go in and they can eat the bait. And by the time the bigger ones come through, there's just not enough bait to be interested in. So what I do is actually would do what I call a skirt. I would actually net this entire thing and I'll cover it with about a two inch mesh so nothing can get in without going to th without going to throw. So that's what we're gonna do. It's not super hard to do once you understand like the basics of it. Um, you're only gonna really need to know about three knots. You're gonna need to learn know how to make some type of hitch, half hitch, timber hitch, uh oh, there's like thirty of them. <laughs> Um, and you're going to need to learn how to do a sheet bin. A sheet bin is by far one of the most, not one of the most, it is probably the most need to know knot in net making. If you don't know how to do a sheet bin knot, you're not going to be able to make that. So that's something you're going to have to learn to do. Um, as far as materials, you're going to need net needles. Uh, if you ask me, the 7 inch, this is a 7 inch net needle is by far the most versatile one just in my few years in net making and it's the one I prefer I've probably gone through about 10 of these just you know from having them, losing them, breaking them um, the ones that come out now they're like this uh, fiber plexiglass um, plastic type stuff you're not gonna break them I know I just said break them but I've like never purposely you know broken one just net making um, I keep them in my back pockets. Um, I sit on them all the time. Like, I just never break them. Um, yes, the 7 inch one for me is like the best one. You have a lot of different ones. You have them all the way down from like little bitty ones like that big to like these big long ones. Um, you have 
the Loomis, which this is the Loomis or the traditional style, and then you have the H or the Norwegian style net needles. And I don't like those very much. Some people do. I don't. I just they just feel weird in my hand. I, I don't know. But I would have two of these, um, just because I don't like to um, continuously. I uh, have to reload them. But you can use one. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to need a knife. Just a nice pair of scissors or something like that. Uh, I got my trusty Mora. If you don't have a Mora, I highly recommend you get one because they're fantastic. And um, you're going to also need your twine. Now, this is actually um, special. I want to say special, special, but it's this twine's been kind of developed for net making. This um, you have tarred bank. This is a tarred bank line type of uh, type of stuff. And this is what is called bonded. Uh, now bonded, it has some kind of coating. It's like a wax or something. Not like tar. It's, it's very easy on the hands where tar kind of tears your hands up a little bit. Um, but it's like a nylon and it's bonded and it keeps not very well. I prefer the bonded over the tar. Uh, just because I, I've had Man, just go down and buy it. It's Bike Bullet and buy it. They sell these in, I think, pound pound rolls is how they sell them, or half pound rolls. And I think I pay like eight dollars per pound, depending on what kind I want. Um, I think I paid like thirteen for this, and it was like three times as big. Uh, it lasts you forever. There's in uh, depending on what size you get. Um, right now we're using number fifteen. Twines go up in size, kind of like um, kind of like shot or uh, gun calibers. They go up. Um, I think the smallest one is like a four, size four, and I think the biggest one is like an 82 or something. Um, some people say you should use a nine. Uh, I feel nine is a little too small. I have some. It's like it's, it's like braid. It's really strong, but it's really small, and I just don't feel comfortable with it. Some people swear up and down by that. Some people swear up and down by a uh, 32 or an 18 minimum. Um, I'm finding 15 is a good is a good um it's a good balance. That's I like number 15 for uh, the wire nets. Now if I will probably be doing a full hoop net of just netting and rings. I'll probably go up to about 18. But for our slider nets, I would use a number 15 bonded. Now, you can buy this stuff from the fish net company. There's a few companies you can buy it from. Uh, Memphis Net and Twine, I think, sells it. Um, Jan, Jan's Net, Jane's Netcraft, however you pronounce that. They sell it, but uh, it's a bit overdone. I think they're a bit, I don't know, I just don't like net, Jan's Netcraft that much. They're a good company, I just don't like them as much as I do the fish net company. Okay, yeah, guys, so... Um, Hoping I'm going to be able to catch everything in the camera properly. Um, so, probably want to do a lot of editing in this, but. Here we go. Now, you can start your first knot wherever you want. You can start it down here, you can start it up here. It doesn't really matter. So, what you want to do is take out about, about three feet worth of twine, depending on how deep your net's going to be. Uh, the deeper your throat, if you want your throat way back here, you want to take out more twine. If you just want it up here, you want to take out less. About three feet seems to be um, a good number. And I'm just going to start right from here. First thing we're going to do, camera over here. Make sure everybody can see it. We got a lot of wind today. The first knot we're going to do. Yes, we're not we're gonna do not, but we're gonna do an overhand right here. This is where we're gonna start. So I just like to do a really good overhand knot and follow it with a uh, half inch. 
And when I'm working with wire, I like to have my knot close to one of these right here. So it's easier for me to get the spacing right. Now, once you get that, let me make sure I'm in camera here. Yep. Once you get that done, depending on how you net make, if you use a mesh stick, you just put your uh, mesh stick. Now, if you don't want to know what a mesh stick is, the mesh stick is usually a piece of plastic or a piece of wood that you use to make to get your spacings right. Now, if you use one of those, you would just put it right here and you would start making your own um, meshes but me I don't use one I use my hand so the way I do that is I know these three fingers equal to about you know combined I'll get about two and a half you know uh, inch mesh when, once it's combined so what I do is I put those together come around back and I like my spacing to be about two inches the smaller your mesh is the smaller your meshes, the closer your spacing is. The larger they are, the larger your spacing. So I do about a two and a half inch mesh total. So I have about a two inch spacing. That's just what I feel is right. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, as far as the kind of math equation you can do to it, I don't know it. But I know when I'm doing it like this, I can get two meshes per square. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, so that's going to be a 24, me 24 uh, me meshes in here. So that's just the way I do it. I prefer to make less mess. I, I prefer to do as few meshes as I need to when I'm doing this because that's just extra work. So anyway, put my fingers like that. Come around the back. Back through here, all we're doing is making a half inch. Nothing complicated about it. Get that spacing right. Make sure I'm in the camera. Spacing's right. Half inch. That's our first one. Now another thing you can do once you get that, once you get your first one now, what you can do is bring your finger here, where it's like that. And you can just kind of size this little trick I like to do. And just size it up to where these two are the same. And once you get that, you come up here, pinch it, and do your half hitch. So we got our first two, and we're just going to go all around here, and we're going to do 24 of them. So. But I'm gonna put the camera at some different angles to make sure everybody's getting this. So About two inches. And again, this is um there is probably math equations where you can get this like hundred percent correct, but for me it's more or less of a feel type thing. I've just been doing this for a while and I just kinda get the feel of it and I just kinda feel what I'm doing. Net making isn't the fastest thing in the world, but it doesn't have to be the slowest thing either. Alright. get to where it's kind of weird working all you gotta do is just flip it and you just keep tying it you know that way now 
Now something else you can do if you really want to be anal about this. You can take a sharpie and a ruler and you can go around here and like every two inches you can make a mark. And on each one of those marks you're going to put a knot. So every two inches you would have one of these uh, marks. And so you can like get the perfect, um, perfect, uh, you know, circumference or, you know, whatever. So if you really want to be really anal about it, that's what you could do. But again, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, everybody, so we uh, went all around here, and we got two meshes per square, and we got 24 meshes total. Now, I'm about to show you guys why we leave this tag on here and how we make this the whole circular thing. So, let me zoom in here. Uh, we made it to our tag in. So, let me try and adjust the camera. Okay, hopefully I can keep that in focus. What we're going to do here is turn these two pieces into a single mesh. Now the way we're going to do that is I like to measure off one mesh here. You would take your mesh stick or something, put them together like that. So they're about the same length as your um, other meshes. And the way I do it is you tie these together with some kind of knot that will not come loose. I just do like a double overhand. Just pull both of those through. And I'm just eyeballing here off the other one. Okay. And that's going to be our 25th mesh. We have 24 total, but when we add this one, we have 25. So now we're going to start doing the sheet bins. Now, this is when all this gets pretty fast. You start getting, you know, pretty fast doing this. So, we try. Make sure. Now, sheet bin is a tricky knot. And I would highly advise y'all, if you do not understand it when I show you, go on YouTube and try and figure it out. There's probably about 50 videos of people just showing how to do the sheet bin. Please learn how to do the sheet bin because none of your nets will work if you do not know how to do the sheet bin. So, I want to come over here. I want to do the same thing with my hand. I'm going to try and show you how I do it. This knot is going to be our starting point. So, say my hand is the mesh stick. And now it's going to lay on top of the mesh stick. Take my needle. Go through this one. Pull it down. And you want to try and get everything perpendicular. I pinch it. You don't have to. You're going to go around both of those strings. And that's going to cause this loop. Now you can come up through it or you can go down through it. It doesn't matter. I do down through it. All the while you're pinching this until that knot, knot is tight and you let it form between your fingers. And then we have a mesh. Now when this is complete, this should not be able to move anyway. Okay? So I'm gonna kind of move it over and do another one. And I take that one, put it in my hand like that, loop it around, catch the other one. Try and get it the same. This is where a mesh stick, if you're not good with this, a mesh stick is a godsend. So if you're not good with net making, you haven't been net making for any time, I would highly recommend using a mesh stick. It's kind of weird doing this, and I would practice a few times, but I would highly recommend it. So go around, down through the loop, form between our fingers, pull it tight, 
There we go, two meshes. I'll pick that mesh up, round, pick that one up. Make sure that's the same length. Around. Pull it. Now we got about three of them done, and we can actually go back to doing it. We can do it with two fingers if we want. Make sure y'all can see it. Two fingers. Sorry for the wind. I think there's some more coming in. Make sure they're about the same. Which they are. Pinch it. This one, make sure it's the same. And this first row is the most important one. Once you get the first row down, then you can, you know, kind of go. Because if you don't get your first row right, your whole neck's going to be messed up. Your whole throat's going to be messed up. So, and as you see, I'm kind of moving through here a little faster. That wind is really picking up, everybody. All right here. Flip your trap if you need to. Make sure I'm still in here. I think you guys understand how to do the sheet bend. So I'm going to zoom out here. I'm gonna try and go a little fast. You don't have to go this fast at like your first time. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys how fast um, you can do it once you get it down. So. Again, I'm no master net maker. I don't have like a degree in net making, and you know, I, I don't have like you know some superpower or something. I don't have any of that. Um, it's just something I like to do and something I practice. This one in the corner is usually a tricky one, so watch it. But still, you're doing the same thing. This one's just going to be kind of wop -sided. Now, another thing is, if you're when you're doing this, if you're right-handed, you work, you know, left to right. But if you're left-handed, you work left, um, um. Right, right to left. Uh, I think that's how it works. But as you see, it's not taking me any time at all once you get your first couple established. And don't worry if some of your throats, I mean, some of your meshes, like, aren't perfectly 100%, you know, symmetrical. Because, you know, that's just the way stuff works, so... The turtle ain't really gonna care, okay? The turtles don't worry about geez, there's food in there, and this is the easiest point. Your whole mission is to make this where it's gonna keep them in, the knots aren't gonna come undone. And I guess if you're selling these, I wanna have I will wanna have them more symmetrical. You know, I won't wanna have them with some craftsmanship to them. But if you're just out there, you know, Billy Bob I like turtle soup on Sunday, guy, and I like learning how to do do stuff like this. Then uh, in that case, you don't gotta worry about it that much. And as you see, it's been like what five minutes since I've started on the sheet bin knots, and we're just about back to where we started. Oh, it's heavy here, guys. I'm gonna move my mag. have this heavy of a win. Um, I, think, I think we're just having, I think it's just the warm uh, winter 
I guess we're having it's February guys and it's like 70 degrees I'm out here I, di I didn't film this in 2016 during the summer guys I, I'm filming this right now I'm probably going to upload this tomorrow it's it's, it's just warm guys that's that's the sound for you it's, it's warm so but I would highly recommend you guys um, go and practice on this before you actually attempt to make one because it's kind of frustrating to um, you know try to make one but you don't have to cut it all off because it's not right so I would get some of this whatever you're using and I would just like cut the first three rings of it form it like the way you would your trap and I would just practice on that just keep it in your house uh, when you're watching the game whatever just sit there and practice so okay now we come here, back to our tag. Now I'm going to tell you guys right now, I can never get the tag right. So, you know, forgive me on this. I know there's some net makers probably watching this who are like, you know, chewing their faces off. Oh, he's not doing it right. Well, I can never really get the tag quite right. So usually at the end of it, I have like one row of meshes that's like taller than the other one. That's just how mine are. So I'm going to come right here, try and get it halfway right. Make sure I'm still in the camera. And we're going to do that double. And then we just start the whole process over again. That's all we're doing. We're just flipping it and doing it and just keep doing it. So instead of just having you guys sit here for like the next 20 minutes watching me do this. Um, you have the basics down. If you can figure this out, you have the basics down. And all you do is just keep doing this until this starts getting really tubular. And then you get about the length of throat you want. So, I'm going to go ahead and make the throat about as long as I want. And then when I'm done with that, we'll come back and I'm going to like show you guys how to do either a finger or a crow's foot throat or a flat throat for turtles. So, we're going to come back when I'm done with this and I'll show you. You guys are about halfway done here. But our needle ran out. So I figured I'll probably put this at the beginning of the video. Is um, how to load your needle. Uh, pretty simple, actually. All you do is uh, take your twine. I like to knot it off at the end so it doesn't, you know, fray out like that. Again, I'm a little OCD on some stuff. That's just me. Take your needle. your twine through like this you can tie it if you want all you do is just go back turn it bend it like so down like that pretty simple they actually have machines that can do this they don't look too hard to build for the H style net needles but they want like 300 bucks for one and I ain't got that kind of money so yeah uh, you know, once you get, get in the net making pretty well, you can just load them up like this. Cool thing I like to do is I like to throw my twine. Get about 10, 15 feet out. And get it up. As you see, it doesn't take a lot of time to do it once you uh, get that whole motion down. And the tighter you bind this, the tighter, the more you get. As y'all see, that was less than two minutes, and I got a full needle. Now, if you like teach a little butter or something, a little sister, how to do it, they can load you up like a bunch of these in a day, and it'll be like super duper fun time or something. So, anyway, back to our net. Uh, so, 
Uh, this is what we came up with. Um, it's a little shorter than I would like, but for demonstration purposes, I think it'll work. So, ours is about, what well, I just made, it's about three inches deep. To be honest, uh, I like five, but it should work for demo purposes. Now, we're finna actually do the uh, whole knot configuration that makes the throat. So, what we're gonna need to do here is, I'm just using a different twine. We're taking this twine, we're gonna take out extra three or four feet here. And we're just going to take it and we're going to thread it through all these loops in here. We're not making any knots, we're just threading all this through here. So we can kind of make, it's going to be kind of like a drawstring on like a bag. That's all we're doing. Make sure y'all seeing me here. Yep. Again, sorry my camera work ain't the best. Basically just putting a drawstring on this. And this is how you do the back of the trap. Uh, for the uh, part where you take the turtles out, this is the exact way you do the back. So I'm not going to show you, that, you guys that, but this is basically all you do. Okay. Go here. Again, sorry for the wind. And this is how the back would look, but we're doing Sorry, my camera is eating batteries. I've literally gone through about 10 or 8 of these, um, probably 12 of them. The heavy duty batteries from like Dollar Store. Uh, you know, you can get like a pack of them for like a pack of 25 for like 8 bucks, for like 5 bucks. I usually use alkaline, but I'm out of them. Thank God I was able to find some. But, um, word of advice if your camera runs on double A's, don't use the heavy duty ones, they, they suck. So back to what we're doing. So, you basically just make a drawstring here. And this is how the back of your trap will look. You can just have a drawstring, you can double this up, and you just tie it off. But we're doing the throat, so what we're going to do is we want it, our drawstring to be able to reach both corners of the trap. So, we want our drawstring a little longer than the width of our trap. So, this one is about. Our trap's about two and a half wide, so this is going to be about three foot, three and a half, something like that. So, we're going to cut that drawstring we just made, double it. Make sure y'all can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Now, with this, I might have to just show you the pictures of from the guy who. I learned how to do it from on a uh, trap man, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and get it on the level that you want. Okay guys, so this should probably be easier way for y'all to understand what I'm doing. So this is side of the trap. This is the side of the trap. And I want my throat to start off, I want it to be level this part right here. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna take from the side, I want about three to four meshes. So I'm going to take those like this, and then draw a string around it. I'm going to do like this. As you see, that bunches it up right there. So, yeah, let me make sure I'm in frame. Okay, I want y'all to be able to see everything I'm doing here. I'm still probably going to have to put the pictures up, but bunch it up like this. So we have three to four meshes in here. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three. You might have to take more up depending on how deep your trap is. Now, I'm gonna take my twine and I'm gonna tie that. These two lines we just made. I'm gonna tie those. The simple overhand knot. Okay. Make 
German frame. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna try to get them perpendicular so we don't have just a big, you know, lopsided mess here. And again, you can just count the meshes out, but you know, I'm, I don't do that. Again, I'm sorry for the wind, guys, but this is a really, really cool way this works. So, I'm going to grab both of these, and you could just use the same one. But the way this works is, that knot you just tied is basically a tensioner. So, when you slide it down more, it makes the throat narrower. So, if you wanted a finger throat, you slide those two knots down like you will get a finger throat when you tie it. Let me zoom out here. Zoom out. Okay, cool. So, when these two knots you tied, tied up here go in, you know, deeper, pull them up more, the throat gets smaller. But when you slide them out wider, Gets water. And again, as I said, this stroke's a little, you know, big for turtles, but for demonstration purposes, it'll work. So there you go. So really, if I wanted to use this for turtles, I would have to add another ring of meshes here. But when you get it to where you want it, and that might require taking a few more of these meshes up to make it uh, the length you want it, or having to add more, what you would do is you would tie these strings here to the side, and that will give you your throat. So, about where you want them here. Just a really good overhand knot. Or series of overhand knots. That side.
there's your throat. Again, we didn't, I didn't put a lot of time into this like I usually would, and I didn't really. Sometimes I'll spend 15 minutes trying to get this as close as I want. And this one is a lot shorter than I usually use, but this is what we came out with. So, um, I will be posting, I will post some pictures on it to show you what one of my finishing ones look like. What, you know, it really looks like when I really, really, you know, try to do it. So, um, really hope this helped y'all out. Um, I'll try to be doing more and try to make them better, so. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and